Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new series where we will look into how we can make a bloxy voxel terrain in Godot. Terrains like this is something I keep coming back to and have experimented with both using WebGL, OpenGL and Godot. Especially when I studied software engineering and computer science at uni. So this is something I've wanted to make a series on for a really long time. I'm currently using Godot 4.4 Beta 1, but I'll keep updating whenever a new version of Godot comes out. My main goal is to guide you through all the ins and outs of what a world like this requires. We'll add and improve things in incremental steps. However, if you're more interested in just getting something to work and not a deeper understanding of it all, then I suggest you go search for a Voxel plugin for Godot instead. During this series, we'll touch upon several interesting topics, including procedural generation, profiling and optimizing, comparing solutions, multi-threading and much more. And now, let's get started. I've already created a new project using the Forward Plus renderer and created a 3D scene. For the first naive approach to create a lot of blocks, we will be using the Godot CSG box 3D node to create our blocks. So let's add one of these to our world and run the project to see what happens. Well, we can't really see anything here. And this is because we need to add a camera 3D and move it back a bit. If you select the camera node, you can also click the camera preview here to see what the camera is seeing without having to run the project. We can also add a color to our cube by adding a new standard material 3D to it and change the albedo color. And finally, we can add a bit of lighting by adding a directional light 3D node to the scene and play around with the rotation of the light. And then I'm also quickly moving the camera a bit up and rotating it, so we're looking at our first little cube from another angle, which makes it easier to see how the light affects the cube. Okay, so now we have our first cube. But what we really want is a lot of cubes generated procedurally. So let's add a script to our root node and start by adding an exported variable that will define the size of our first little world. For this I'm assuming that our blocks will have size 1 in all dimensions, so if the world is 16 by 16 by 16 large, we have 16 to the power of 3 positions where we can potentially place a block. I'm beginning with a very small world, and hopefully you will soon realize why. For this first little introduction, we'll just be placing blocks at random in the world, so it won't actually look like a terrain yet. We will come to that later. We want all the random cubes to be just like our first little cube, so I'm also adding a ready variable to store a reference to our default cube so we can duplicate it in a minute. To create our first little world, we need a ready method. And here we'll be using three for loops to go through every single position we might place a block. Now we need a way to determine if we should place a block or not at a given position. For this we can use a random number generator, so let's create one in the beginning of the ready method. I've left a link in the description to where you can read more about the random number generator node in the Godot documentation. Okay, so for each position, we then create a random number using the randf method with no arguments. Using the method like this, we'll return a floating point number between 0 and 1. Next, we can check if our newly randomly generated number is larger than 0 0.5, and if this is the case, we create a new cube by duplicating the default cube, 
set its position and add it as a child of the root node. And finally, at the end, I also remove the default cube from our scene. Now let's test and look at our first little random world. To make it easier to test how this scales, I'm just quickly adding an exported variable for the cutoff for placing a cube. At this point, I encourage you to just experiment with the different values for both the cutoff and the size of the world. Why do Bloxy voxel games not just use this simplified approach? What's the main problem here? And how does the size and the density of the world affect the time it takes to generate the terrain using this solution? If you want to test all of this with something that maybe looks a bit more like a terrain, you can also use the Godot Fast Noise Light node instead of the random number generator. And instead of using randf to get the random value, we can then use the Get Noise 3 d instead and use the coordinates as the input. This will return a value between minus 1 and 1, so keep that in mind when you set the cutoff value. You can read more about fast noise light in the Godot documentation. And congratulations! Now you've created your first procedurally generated blocky voxel terrain. It might not be ready for a full-blown game yet, but it's a very good place to start. Next, we need to analyze the problems and lacking features to determine what to do next. I'm thinking that the biggest problem with the generation right now is that it's just too slow. So, one thing we could explore next would be how to move this into multiple threads. Another thing we need before we can try out more advanced solutions for generating and optimizing our terrain is a way to move the camera so we can explore the world better and also get a feeling of how the algorithms we use affect the frame rate when we move around. And finally, we need a way to measure how fast a solution is. So we need to look into how we can profile a solution so we can properly compare any future solutions we might try out. Which of these would you prefer to tackle first and why? Please let me know in the comments below. And in the next episode of this series, you'll see what I decided to tackle next. As always, the project files for this video are available for selected tiers on Patreon. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that if you want to see more like this in the future. Bye!